Hi everybody, it's me again, Mermaid Anoka, and welcome back to my fish talk. So today I'm going to be continuing my series on how to become a mermaid. Uh, the first one, uh, which is already posted, was how to get yourself ready to become a mermaid. The second one was supposed to be about tails, and then the third one was about mersonas. Unfortunately, due to supply issues and COVID and some general just problems all around, all of the tails that I have ordered, I'm waiting on three right now, have not come and they are running behind. So I don't want to talk about tails and not be able to provide real examples. So we're going to skip the tail video, go into Mersonas, and then we'll swim back. So Mersonas. What is a Mersona? It's, it's kind of like a character that you become when you decide you're in your mermaid zone. It's your mindset, right? Because right now, my name is Rachel, right? I'm just little old Rachel. When I put on my tail, when I start swimming, even if I'm not in full costume, I become Mermaid Anoka. Like, that's where my mind goes. But how did I make this? Like, how do you make a, a Mersona? Do you even need one? The answer is no, you don't need one. There are plenty of mermaids out there who are, I'm Mermaid Sarah, I'm Mermaid Sam, I'm Mermaid Julie, you know? They just, it's mermaid in your name because you are yourself. You know, you don't want to become anybody else. And that's okay. You don't need a Mersona. There are plenty of mermaids who do this professionally that also don't have a Mersona. Uh, for example, Vero Beach Mermaid or the Virginia Mermaid. They have brands. Uh, they're very recognizable, but they don't have like one look that they stick to. Generally, Mersonas are, are, are one looks. So let me, go, let me go into a Mersona. The way that I made my Mersona, I followed five different steps. The first was have a general idea. The second was come up with a color scheme. Third was developing a name. Fourth was coming up with a background. And five are accessories. So first, let's go into having an idea. So I knew I wanted to be a freshwater mermaid. Okay, it's just one of those things. Generally speaking, you have freshwater, saltwater, brackish water. Now, your brackish water is a mix, if you don't know, of salt and fresh. For the most part, you're really just going to see fresh water and salt water. When you have these two, they can be broken down, right? If you like vibrant colors, if you like contrast, like sharp contrast, generally you're going to be a, a saltwater fish. If you think of fish, that's kind of where you're going with, with your Mersona. Me, I like neutral tones. I like earthy tones. I'm all about brown, black, like my personal favorite colors. Uh, so I knew I wanted to be fresh because I like the look of freshwater fish more. They're beautiful, beautiful tropical fish, which is usually what mermaid tails go towards, more of the tropical colors. Not always. Um, and caveat, sometimes you're not always a fish. I have seen quite a few mermaids who look at whales and dolphins and seals and other animals to help uh, stingrays to come up with their mershonas, what their tails look like. So take inspiration wherever you want, but usually they fall within those three camps. Mermaid Anoka is a freshwater mermaid. So then we go into the color scheme. So my color scheme shifted. When I first started looking for a tail, I wanted a brown tail. The end. I knew I wanted a brown tail as a freshwater mermaid. I wanted to be found in like the lakes around where I live. And I've moved since then. So, I mean, your mersona is going to shift, you know, as you get older, as you become more defined in who you are. This is Morty. He tried to knock over my selfie stick. So I had to arrest him. That's why he's suddenly in the picture. So, Mwah. Everybody say hi to Morty. His name is Mordred, not from Rick and Morty. Okay, so color scheme. Mine, mine changed. That's what I was talking about. I know I wanted brown. And then I went on Facebook Marketplace because I didn't really know where to buy a mermaid tail. I'd watched videos. I'd done research. I had an idea of which brand I wanted to buy from, but I didn't really have the funds at that moment to just go and buy you know, whatever. Because originally I wanted a, a Finn Folk tail. That was my personal preference at the time. But Finn Folk 
is very unique in how they sell their tails. I'm not going to steal the thunder from uh, the next video, but I couldn't just go and say, hey, I want a brown tail. It just, it wouldn't work like that, right? So I needed to look and see if there were any finfolk tails out there that were close to what I wanted and that were secondhand. So what I ended up getting is my Olympia in the old neoprene uh, fabric. So the Olympia's colors are a light brown, white, and gold. At first, I was not a fan of the white. I'll be honest. I'm like, oh, it's too white. I want more of a siren look. You know, I like the darker tones. And that's just a very happy color, right? I thought, you know, the Olympia looked really like a, like a happy mermaid look. Less siren, less scary. But it's all I had. You know, and at least until they had a further sale. And that's when I bought my Song of the Sea which are the leggings I'm wearing currently. And that is more my siren tail. Uh, so just like a darker side of my Mersona. So then my colors shifted. So I went from a wanting brown to gold, light brown and white. And then I got the Song of the Sea, which added turquoise. And then I realized, you know what? I kind of like that color combination. So right now, of the two tails I have purchased from Finfolk, uh, neither one matches my persona 100%. I've had a custom tail commissioned uh, from a couple different places, and when they get here, I'll talk about them. But in general, I my my color scheme would actually this is a pretty good look. At my little pretty pillow would be brown, light brownish gold, turquoise with white accents. So I kind of like the idea of like circles, uh, like little little bubbles, you know, throughout the tail or like highlights on scales, that kind of thing. So that became my color scheme. We'll just say four colors. Um, different mermaids will recommend having different colors. Uh, sometimes they'll say just have three. I like having four. You know, if I can't get all four, maybe I can do three out of four. Uh, so that's, that's the next step as a color scheme. So now that I know I was fresh water, which fed my color scheme, I need to decide on a name and then make a background for my character. Because uh, if you're a role player, which I am, I love playing D&D, you need a backstory to help you get into the mindset of your character. So I struggled with the next two steps. Name, backstory, what am I gonna do? My job right now uh, is, kind of like a first responder law enforcement type thing. So I wanted to be a protector. I mean, in general, that's just kind of like my personality. I'm the mom of the group. I want to stand up for people. So I'm like, I'm going to have a warrior mermaid, maybe a Viking, you know, maybe armor, but I'm going to have a warrior mermaid. What the hell am I going to name her? You know, so you can do this in order of picking a name and then a backstory or a backstory and then a name. I was going back and forth between what I should do first. So then I was like, you know what? I kind of got an idea for backstory. I'm gonna stick to a name. I was thinking animal names, right? Turtle, the mermaid. Mm, probably not. Although I think it'd be really cute if you had like a turtle tail. I was thinking, I was looking up mermaid, water, rain, creek, lake, lily. I was looking up different different words in different languages. I know because I wanted to go professional or semi-professional or at least make money of it somehow, I needed like an easy name and a lot of the other languages were a little bit harder to pronounce or would be hard to spell if someone was trying to find me. So I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do? I have no idea. I don't know, you know what? I'm just gonna do Anoka. And Anoka came from my first World of Warcraft character who's name was really long. It was like, it was Anoka Shralam. That was, that was the name. I needed something that was pretty, but wasn't taken already on the server. So Anoka Shralam was my, my wow character. And I can't tell you where I came up with that name from. Could not tell you. It was just off the top of my head. I think it was because I had just watched the Clone Wars. And so Ahsoka was on the brain. Uh, but so my name became Anoka. And then I said, okay, I'm going to be a warrior mermaid. My whole shtick will be for birthday parties. I go around and I protect princesses or princes and I bring them like a little crown and they would be the prince or princess I protect. Since then, my mind has changed, uh, which you're likely to do. As you start to flesh out your characters, you start to think about them more. 
you know, I wanted to become more relatable and more approachable because I was thinking the more siren I look, uh, the, the darker the makeup, the scarier or more ornate, you know, the, the armor, it might not be approachable for children. Um, and it'd be a little bit harder to swim in for like a tank, which is something else I really want to do. Um, sorry, I have my notes down here, so I don't, I don't skip anything. So my story has kind of changed. What's something that's really easy that a uh, mermaid Anoka could do? What would explain my traveling? If I'm not protecting somebody, why am I traveling? You know, why do you sometimes see me in a creek, uh, in a spring? How does mermaid Anoka get to the beach if she's a freshwater mermaid? Like, what are these questions I have to prepare for in case someone asks me? So I changed my mind and mermaid Anoka is now a fish herder. She brings fish to school, right? She guards schools of fish and gets them from places to, get to place to place. And like a cowboy or a drover, uh, if you've ever watched the movie Australia, you travel where the work is. So Mermaid Anoka, while she may have been born in the Tar River, North Carolina, now she lives wherever she needs to go. She goes where she's needed. You know, she protects the fish. She can, she's worked in the ocean before. She's been in the Amazon and seen the, the weird looking dolphins. And it gives me some, some reason to travel without it being centered around like violence and protection, you know, because well, what am I protecting princess mermaids from sharks? Well, then that paints sharks in a bad light and they shouldn't be because they are wonderful creatures, you know? So I just, I needed to change how I wanted to approach questions and how I, what kind of answers and what kind of image I wanted to give off. I still like the darker images. If you look at my videos, I'm always wearing darker lipstick. I try to do a little bit darker in the eyes. Um, my tail is just gonna have to kind of shift, you know, and it's good to have a couple different tails so you can choose, you know, okay, I wanna be siren -y today. I want some spooky pictures or I want something pretty and golden and happy. It's good to have a variety, but stick within your color scheme. So to recap, we have come up with a general idea of what we want come up with a color scheme, come up with a name, and come up with a background. The last is accessories. This is probably the least important because it'll you'll just kind of gather these over time. I know Mermaid Anoka shouldn't have that many like ocean related accessory accessories because she's a freshwater mermaid. So I kind of just have to keep that in mind as I go forward. Eventually what I want to do is create like a big herder staff, you know, like, like the sheep herder staff, the big hook, um, like a candy cane, but instead of just a normal arch of wood, I want it to be like a giant fisher, fisherman's lure, you know, or a fisherman's hook and have like a pretty lure dangling over. Another thing I can add is she helps clean up the lakes and the creeks and stuff. So maybe I can have some like plastic bottles and like a pointy end where she can spear trash and like take trash out of the area. Uh, somebody told me that mermaiding is like a gateway drug to conservation and I think it's actually true because like now I'm trying to get into more ideas of okay like how can we clean this up and you know how can I get her to be a good role model. So there you go. A uh, couple more notes I do want to talk about is a uh, mersona is different than cosplaying. So a good example of someone who has a mersona but also cosplays is Mermaid Zelda. Her Mersona is the um, Sailor, Sailor Moon. Um, she, she, she's like the Sailor Moon mermaid, right? But you'll see her cosplaying as like Melody, as Ariel. She recently just did Serena from Pirates of the Caribbean for the Shop Vancouver Mermaid sale. Um, so she does different characters that are already established. So if you're taking a character that is not your personal creation, that's cosplay. If it is your personal creation, then it's your Mersona. So if anyone else, I highly doubt this, but wanted to dress up as Anoka, that would be cosplaying because she is my intellectual property. Um, so that's an important note. Again, I want to say it's okay if you change your mind and it's actually okay if you have multiple, multiple Mersonas. Um, some people have two, you know, like if I wanted to, I could have Mermaid Anoka and uh, Siren Dorothy, I don't know, random. And then I could have like one that's meant to be approachable and pretty and one that's meant to drown sailors, you know? So it's okay if you want to have multiple characters, it's okay. 
It's all what you're comfortable about and what you want to do. Because the bottom line is you want to have fun. You just want to be believable. And then a couple other mermaids, if you want to try and get an idea of what a mersona is, um, Nerd Maid Faith has a mersona. Uh, you can check her out. She does a bunch of different YouTube videos, but her colors are galaxy. So while she may have a bunch of tails because she's, you know, very well known in the community and gets tails to review, her personal look is galaxy themed. I've already talked about Mermaid Zelda, uh, Vancouver Mermaid or Shop Vancouver Mermaid. Uh, she's got like a blue and green color vibe going on. And then my personal favorite is Mermaid Phantom, the Magic Crafter. I think she's got a super, super unique Mersona. Um, and she, following her, I've learned a lot because she's got, I think, two different silicone tails now, Rebellion and I can't think of the other one, but um, she's got two different tails and they're, they're very, very similar, but they're a little bit different. So that shows you the importance of keeping a color scheme and a look so that you're recognizable even if you do change a tail. All right, well, that's about it for the most of the videos. If you have questions, please, please, please put them in the comments. I will answer them or make a separate video and answer them that way. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, please uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Thank you for coming to my fish talk.